Wintertime was exceptionally busy for Donald and Douglas. From the first snowfall until the spring thaw, they remained back to back. Snow plows were firmly fastened to their fronts. Back and forth they went, clearing the main and branch lines. Is that you back there, doggy? Chuckled Donald. I can't recall what you look like. I thought you'd been turned into a works coach, smirked Douglas. The other engines were grateful and praised the twins whenever they went rushing by. There was another engine who played an equally important role come winter. If you were to pass by the sidings, you'd find Harvey hard at work. He and the workmen tended to icy rails and frozen points, and Harvey was most helpful at re-railing trucks and coaches. There you go, fellas, he said. Solid rails beneath your wheels again. The truck smiled thankfully. James, who was waiting to add them to his slow goods, was less grateful. Come on, you horrid things, he huffed. I'm late enough as it is. You're welcome, called Harvey incredulously, though it was drowned in the commotion. One morning, the works coach derailed on frozen points. Harvey was putting it to rights when Trevor chuffed in, a loaded car trailing behind him. Good day, Harvey. This weather keeping you busy. Busy enough? Harvey chuckled. You're looking jolly, Trevor. What have you got there? Decorations for the station. It'll be a lovely party. All these lights and ornaments. And a beautiful tree, too. Er, where is the tree? We're off to fetch it now. Donald and Douglas puffed in, full of pride. The fat controller says we're to bring it back from the other railway. Not bad for a couple of, what was it James called us, Donald? Glorified snowplows, I believe, smirked Donald. Laughing heartily, the twins coupled to the works coach and set off to clear the line. Trevor smiled, but Harvey didn't. Not even a thank you, he sighed. Ah, there you are. Thank you. Sir Topham Hat came strolling over. Harvey perked up, but the comment wasn't directed at him. Well done, Trevor. Smiled Sir Topham Hat. These decorations will make the station look splendid. He turned to Harvey. I've received reports of fallen trees on the line near the forest. Please take workmen to clear it at once. I, sir, sighed Harvey. Tell you what, smile, Trevor. I don't have any other jobs today. I'll come help you. Harvey smiled. A spot of company would be nice. Donald and Douglas had a good run up the line, but by the time they'd reached the last station, heavy snow fell from the graying sky. I didn't like the looks of the, said Donald, let's get back quick as we can. Meanwhile, Harvey and Trevor made their way towards the forest. Other engines sped past with long trains. Harvey felt glum. It'd be nice to feel more useful. He sighed, I'm not helped with passengers or parcels at all the season. Those trains wouldn't be going anywhere if the trucks and coaches were derailed or if their lines were blocked by trees. Smile, Trevor. You're more useful than you know Harvey. I agree, Harvey. I suppose you have a point, right? Let's get to work. The snow fell harder as Harvey and Trevor removed the fallen trees and branches from the line. It was hard work, but their boilers were warm, and they wouldn't let up. They were nearly finished when the foreman spoke. There's a damaged tree close to the line. It's still standing, but its trunk is cracked and uprooted. One hard gust, and it'll block the track. We might as well bring it down while we're here. A chain was wrapped around the trunk and fastened to Harvey's hook. He pulled with all his might. Nearly there, he panted. Finally, with a creak, the tree began to fall, but not in the direction they'd hoped. With a crash, it came to rest on the tracks. Everyone was speechless, even more so when a pair of whistles sounded in the distance. It's Donald and Douglas, cried Harvey. They won't see the tree with all the snow. Get the cranes attached to that tree, cried the foreman. No time for that. I'll do it, huffed Harvey. Harvey hooked onto the tree. It was thick and heavy, but slowly it began to lift. Trevor whistled to alert the twins, and with a great effort, Harvey swung the tree out of the way. He was just in time as Donald and Douglas slid past with screeching brakes. There was silence. The twins noticed the tree just clear of their line. Thank you, Trevor, gasped Donald. Don't thank me. Harvey cleared the tree. He'd be off the rails were it not for him. A brawly engine you are, Harvey, smiled Douglas. Harvey was about to reply when he noticed an empty flatbed coupled between Douglas and the works coach. Pardon me, you, but where's the tree? Trapped on the wrong side of a block tunnel. Run it, Donald. Seems the other railway decided to send us their bad weather instead. Ugh, the fat controller won't be happy. Oh, I think he will. Smile, Harvey. Quickly, the breakdown cranes lowered the fallen tree onto the flatbed. When it was secure, Harvey, Trevor, and the twins set off for the big station. The snowfall lessened as they traveled along, and soon they were welcomed in with a chorus of whistles. Hurry for the twins, hide the engines. Then they thank us. We've only got a tree thanks to Harvey. I'd say you all have plenty to thank Harvey for, added Trevor pointedly. He's been invaluable in keeping your trains running to time. The other engines were silent. They realized they had been taking Harvey for granted. An excellent observation, Trevor. 
Sir Totham had stood on the platform. Harvey, you are a credit to our railway. You've played a vital role in our yard this Christmas. Thank you, sir, blushed Harvey. I didn't think anyone had noticed. Sir Totham had chuckled. I always know what's going on in my yard, including when other engines aren't grateful. He shot a look at James, who sheepishly glanced at his buffers. As a reward for all your hard work, he continued, I have one final job for you. Quickly, the workman stood the tree on the platform. Trevor's decorations were strung amongst the branches, and its lights twinkled in the winter night. At last, it came time for Harvey's job, hoisting the start of the top of the tree. I told you the party would be lovely, smiled Trevor, and it's all thanks to you. Merry Christmas, Harvey. Harvey felt happier than ever before. While the other engines were thankful for his help, he was thankful to have a good friend in Trevor.